Hello everybody and welcome back and today we go to the Essex area and at the start of the account way back in time and this came in to me from a gentleman named Chris and it's the Amsbury Banks Epping Strange Happening in the Woods. Amsbury Banks between the Wake Arms Roundabout and Epping is another late Iron Age earthwork in the area of Warnton where I spent much of my teenage years says Chris. The fort encompasses an area of 4.5 hectares and is surrounded by a bank up to 2 metres in height and an impressive ditch in places, which today is quite shallow, but once was up to 3 metres deep and 6 metres wide. The site has been examined archaeologically nine times now. The first excavation was conducted by Augustus Pitt Rivers in 1881. The defences today have six major breaks in their circumference and only one appears to be original. And this is approached from the north-west by a trapezoidal causeway. The end of the bank at this point was revetted with coarse pudding stones. And it was an area I used to go back to. A num I've been there a number of occasions and finds at the site have included flints and flint arrowheads and shards of red, grey and black pottery which would suggest a construction date of around 700 BC um, an occupation until 42 AD and the hill fort today lies in Epping Forest although it's right next to the B139 Epping to Lawton Road the area is with, within is completely wooded and crossed by a few paths which are supposed to be for only walking now there are many paranormal accounts from the area and according to legend, this is a site of the last stand of Boudicca. Many people will call her Bodicea, but that is her Latin or Roman name. Her real name is Boudicca, and she was one of our queens. And she fought against the Romans in the year 61, and her go ghost is said to be seen wandering around. Now Chris says, With the above legend in mind, this place became a focus of investigations for me in the late 70s. It had everything I was interested in, history, legend, archaeology, and was close to my home in Lawton. Unfortunately, nothing was ever witnessed there in Boudican terms. No women in white dresses, no Britain warriors or Roman legionnaires, or indeed any apparitions at all. I found the entrance being the rampart near the Epping Road. It was a rather peaceful place, and indeed most of the fort was. But the further one went into the interior and approached the rear, in the areas that fewer people would visit, the stranger the place became. On one of my visits I was convinced I heard the sound of footsteps following me, so I ducked out of sight and I waited to see. This was Epping Boris after all, and who knows what could have been following me in there, but when I stopped walking so did the footsteps. And they didn't start again once I set off. There was always a feeling of being watched in this part of the fort. Not exactly hostile, but then again, not exactly friendly either. The presence has been reported by others walking in this area as well. One other thing of note perhaps, our dog didn't like the area at all. And while usually he'd be running free, well away from me, he would run back and, you know, check, but he was nervous. He kept close by me, he was around my legs all the time, and at one point he was almost tripped me up. He was looking around, he was definitely nervous, and he wasn't happy. And there are other accounts from the area where this happened to Chris, um, and... This is one of the many accounts and reports come in over the years that I've filed away on the Lawton camp area and I've never been sure or they've never been clear enough for me to add them to the sightings map. But I have noticed a similarity in them with many of the reported Bigfoot accounts we hear. There are just some, uh, these are just some of the notes that I've made on the area. There's an old tale from 1313 of a hermit named Kate who lived within a cellar in the woods and reported among other things are drumming rhythmic sounds, shadows and people being followed or stalked within the woods, strange ghostly lights and mist. 
and in 2004, a witness named, named Lee stated, Myself and two friends had been there at the camp one night, and the wind really began to blow, making the trees creak and whistle as the wind rushed through them. The atmosphere was really edgy, and we treated through the woods back to the car. I wonder if anyone else has ever investigated here or knows any more about this site. Well, another witness in answer stated, Hello there, I wasn't sure whether to even enter this post as it all seemed a bit weird, but this is what happened to me at Launton Camp. My friend and I were chilling up at the beginning of the foot of the hill for a while before dusk and spent an hour undisturbed by humans. We were far away into the forest and heard nothing but animal sounds. As it got dark, we decided to leave, but I had to take a call of nature. So as I went off doing my things, we both heard a deepish drum banging in a slow rhythm from somewhere in the woods. I kind of joked about it, but we were both a bit freaked out. It was getting pretty dark as well. And the odd thing, though, was the deep groaning we heard as we were walking briskly out of the woods. It seemed very low fag and I asked my friend to stop and listen, but he was too scared. I wasn't even up there investigating and I was wondering if anyone knows of any other experiences there because I'd like to know if similar things have been witnessed. And the drumming was totally bizarre and we heard or saw no one or any other unnatural noises other than the two I've just described. And another account on a paranormal thread stated, On one occasion in the 1970s during the day, a friend and myself were at the camp, and it was overcast and very little wind was around. We were pelted as though a strong wind was in force with beech nuts. We moved and got the same treatment, and then realisation dawned we were stood under oak trees. I actually kept the beech nut from my parka's hood for years afterwards. And as regular subscribers will know, Epping Forest is, is one of the areas that's become a hot spot for cryptid researchers in the south of England. And I too would be heading there and to the corridors that lead into it and away from it. So if you've had a strange experience, as I know many of you have at Launch and Camp, um, please get in touch and I can pass your information on to Chris. As he is now researching, he, but he researches both. Um, and he has extensive history in the paranormal research. If you could contact me and I can pass your details on to Chris. And Chris is on the, um, on the map of British researchers. And he isn't making any claims here. He's just saying that he's looking at things that happened a few years ago from a different perspective um, to see if, you know, everything we come across in the woods is ghosts or not. Um, so un until next time, I will keep you updated. Um, and I'll be back very shortly. Thank you very much. Good night.